So I figured I would do a little refresher. This is good to go over every few months or whatever for a lot of reasons. I think it's important to be reminded in the midst of like the day-to-day -day stuff that we all do, getting caught up with new loans and sales and closings and credit and this and that, getting jammed in pages and pages of financials and trying to get that straight and filing crap away all the time and focusing on videos. Like it's easy to wake up, have it be May 10th or whatever. And you'd be like, wait a second, what are we doing again? You know, I think it's important. Uh, this is more specific to the lending company, but it's it's what we're trying to do as a company. And I think it's important to to make the lending company kind of the center of it because everything spawns off the production of the lending company. As the lending company grows, it makes the other sort of facets of our business easier to grow. It's a recurring revenue stream. It's probably the biggest energy business besides these two guys at Centered now, that might change, <laughs> change things. But it's the biggest center of like energy for us. It's the biggest breadth of business we have. It has the biggest opportunity, at least sort of here in the near term. And it's been a staple for us for 10 years, 11 years. So I think it's important to understand as I kind of go through this, there's a lot of more lending references than there is references to anything else, but it's because of that. Anything we want to do is going to be possible because of what this sort of outlays. It's the objectives, then it's what is it. Our objectives, three, three objectives that I think are simple, but they're not easy. I like that one. Create a billion dollar lending company who believes that an abnormal level of success is possible for the company and its individuals in their personal and professional journey. That's abnormal level of success in your relationship with your friends, husband, wives, or whatever else you got going on relationship wise, it's an abnormal marriage or an abnormal level of success, an abnormal level of accomplishment. The idea is that we're all trying not to look like our friends, but to be a cut above. And that's again, personal and professional. To create a billion dollar lending company that lives in an alternate universe, creating its own unconventional world, a world that defies the odds defies its pedigree and makes people say, how the fuck did they do that? There's nobody here that went to Harvard University. Nobody here went to like HBS, you know, no one did. And that's something that I'm proud of. And I think we should all be proud of it. Some, we have a handful of people here who didn't even go to fucking college. I'm even more proud of that. And I tell you guys all the time, the biggest mistake I made, I think was going to college. And I'm starting to think maybe even, even bigger one was going to high school. So I really want, I really want to take all of us to take pride in the fact that none of us have a pedigree. I don't think anybody here's parents are well to do, to my knowledge. I think everybody was, you know, middle class at best. And I think that's important. That's a very important thing. We had one person who worked here from Harvard. Uh, talk about a flop. And number three is to create a billion dollar lending company who doesn't give a shit about right now, the past or next year, but a company that has a hyper long term focus thinking in terms of decades, not years. That's why we can go out at zero points for as long as we need to go out because we're trying to build the thing up for decades. So just because it might go knocking on doors and have some success, knocking on doors, and we don't buy the first property that you get somebody to say yes to, because I'm not thinking about today, tomorrow, or the next year. We're trying to think in terms of decades and doing a bad deal now or a short deal just to please somebody who found it, which we did for my brother and it worked out horribly. That's not the way we want to think. You got to be willing to go through 10,000 doors before we say yes to one and be grateful that we said yes to even that one. That's the way you got to think about everything. Not that you don't, by the way, I'm just using that as an example. Decades, not years. It's people are willing to outweigh the competition. They're willing to hear no 100 times while remaining unfazed that the corporate mission and the mission of its people will undoubtedly be accomplished. What is it? It's a national lending organization that lends money to developers and home flippers in the cities it chooses, on the terms it chooses, and when it chooses. It's a company that answers to virtually no one and makes decisions independent of itself. It's becoming self-reliant and self-sustaining organization. Its employees are challenged personally, challenged to be better husbands and wives, to take care of their bodies, to read and to think differently, to believe in a life greater than where they came from, and to live that life in places that they never expected to travel, houses they never expected to stay in, and get there in ways they never knew were attainable. They give more than they get. They are becoming great people. Its employees are challenged professionally, 
challenged to earn more income than they dream possible, challenged to out-earn their friends, challenged to learn more about life, business, and entrepreneurship than they could anywhere else, to expand their possibilities of who they're interacting with, and to treat people in a way that leaves a lasting impact. They're becoming great business people. So as a reminder, this was written at some point in 2020 when we were getting ready to hopefully relaunch back in like November, December, and all that. But it was written to try to reframe why we're doing what we're doing. And for, you know, 8, 10, 12 weeks or something, we just kept harping, harping on abnormal level of success, alternate universe, and hyper long-term focus. And then as we were harping on that stuff, like it just sort of, I felt like it became more normal. So then we kind of put this thing together. It's a good reminder in the day-to-day -day minutia that like you can't get discouraged if the financials don't come out on time. You can't get discouraged if we say no to the owners of the Pitbull and German Shepherd. You can't get disappointed if I say no to a 40B project and it's the seventh project you've sent over. You know, you can't get disappointed if you get yelled at about wax, white wax being on a black line on the boat. You know what I mean? You can't get upset if you don't save a purchase and sale in the right area. I don't know that that happened, by the way. I'm just making it up. You can't get upset if you get pushed to your limits to try to learn how to cut videos up. You can't get stuck in the way that you're currently doing things. You, there's no reason like you can't be the best video editor guy possible. There's no reason you can't look at a 10 minute clip and pick out the best 30 seconds on your own and then write a description on it. Those things are all gotta be possible for you. And then that's how you keep elevated, you know? I think you gotta think about that in every facet and every department, but that's what we're doing here, right? There's nobody who's coming here and just doing one thing and staying in that spot for a long time. It's just not what we do, you know? Ask Jack. I think Jack still might hold four titles, I think, right? Four, yeah, something like that. It's a lot of titles. As we go out there this week, I think it's just good to reframe those things and to be reminded that in spite of what the day-to-day -day monotony sometimes can be, we're trying to nudge that thing forward and we're trying to create sort of that special company that re really just kind of does what the fuck we want because we fucking want to, you know? That was a big part of my call with the reboot guy on Wednesday. And he's like, dude, you know, he's kind of like, well, why do you do what you do? We go through this whole like iteration, right? Because it's, you know, it's sort of this holistic approach to life, business, etc. He's like, do you know what would happen if, if you asked Beethoven why he wrote, you know, blah, 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 symphony, whatever the most famous one is. And I said, well, you know, he goes, dude, he'd punch you in the fucking face. And I said, okay, that's a good one. I said, well, where are you going with that? He said, this whole life and business is about doing shit just because you fucking want to. Like, you don't have to rationalize or justify anything, right? Why did you take over that gym? Or why are you in the lending business? Or why this? Because I fucking want to be. Everything that we're doing should be because we fucking want to be doing it, you know? and doing it in a way that we want to do it. And that's what I think ties in nicely to this in a way. You got to obviously operate that without being fucking a narcissist, but I think that there's a lot of truth in doing it because we want to do it, you know? Not because we necessarily have to do something. If there was anything at all that you liked in that video, you're welcome. If there's anything you didn't like, blame Marco. But either way, like, subscribe, comment, whatever suits you. You know, my mom yelled at me for swearing in the videos. She said, she watches all the videos. She got mad that I was swearing.